the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Thank you again, Dr. Jodasa, for this privilege, and your dear wife and the entire membership of this great assembly. I thank you for the honor and the opportunity afforded me to bless our hearts again at this session. Um, we have a lot to do now and I'd just like us to go to the Lord in prayer and then we get to the business of the moment. Father, <clears throat> it remains an honor to edify the body to bless your people through the revelation of your word. Thank you for the sessions past. Thank you for all of the preachers, the men and the women you have anointed to bring your word with power, with clarity. I ask, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that your word will come with fire, to come with power. Let it bring understanding in the name of Jesus. We declare that Christ and him alone will be glorified. And I pray that your body will be thoroughly edified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. <clears throat> we started discussing the subject of grace. Um, you may want to call this by grace through faith part two this is our final session together and um, i'll just do a quick recap on our last session for those of you who were not around um, please do well to get the teachings they are most edifying to just open you up to the foundation that we laid amen let's look at ephesians chapter one and verse three we'll start with that scripture Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ the Bible says who hath blessed us now take note not who will bless us who hath blessed us with all not some hath blessed us past tense with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ the Bible tells us that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. And um, our last time together, I began to talk about uh, the fact that the grace of God first represents an awareness, a consciousness. A consciousness that it is a disposition of understanding. Please pay attention. A disposition of understanding that um reveals the limitless provisions and the possibilities that are contained in god accessed through the office and the person of the christ so the limitless provisions the limitless possibilities that are in god resident in god and available to the saints through the mediator the office and the person of Jesus Christ. This is the grace of God. That the grace of God is not merely a provision that helps people to come into the faith life, uh, what we call salvation. Um, it is not just anointing. Those, those are just dimensions of it. But that generically speaking and holistically speaking, the grace of God represents all of the multifaceted dimensions that are in God, the possibilities and the provisions that are in God, available to the saints through the person and the office of Jesus Christ. You have to get this. So it is first the consciousness. The grace of God represents the understanding, the orientation, the consciousness of this reality that i come to god and i am aware that god is limitless there are infinite possibilities encapsulated in god the father and they are all available to the saints but only through the person 
and the office of the Christ. This is the first revelation of grace. Then the second definition of grace, I said, is the empowerment that, come on, that comes to the believer on account of that consciousness. That when you believe in this kingdom, it does not just stop as knowledge or information. Your belief attracts a dimension of empowerment that now energizes you to walk in keeping with the provisions that makes those realities manifest in your life. Please don't miss this. These are not just mere play of words or with words. They, they are the foundation that will govern our understanding and even what we'll be dealing with today. So the consciousness of the limitless possibilities that are in God given to man through the person and the office, Christ, the grace of God, the empowerment that that consciousness attracts, that energizes the believer supplies the supernatural strength and capacity in the believer to walk in keeping you see we need that supernatural strength because there are certain conditions that the bible requires that the believer must be postured in or postured at for the release of the manifestation of that grace and by the strength of the flesh no one has that that ability so our belief attracts and energizing that helps us to walk in keeping with the principles that make for the manifestation of those realities we desire i said a lot of things in our last session i may not go through all of them but i will just mention a few that are worthy of note one of it is that um understanding grace does not just stop in believing this reality if we stop just in believing this reality as though our job is just to believe, um, that is not exactly very accurate as we'll be learning. There is a lot more to it and this is what I want to discuss right now. So we discuss the subject of grace and then true faith. Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and verse 9, the Bible says, For by grace are ye saved, then through faith. I, I did clarify yesterday the Bible's concept of works. What the Bible calls the works of the law is not action, no. The Bible does not forbid action. In fact, the Bible is a book of actions. God is a God of actions. Every time you see God, he's always acting. Even Jesus in his position of rest is still making intercession for the saints. So I, I want to clarify this because the idea that the moment we believe there is nothing else to do, us is just to believe and God does everything. Um, it is a very sincere communication, but I may respectfully observe that I do not believe based on the integrity of scripture and the lives of those with proven results that there is always an action or a set of actions that are taken not as additions to what God has done but as participatory responsibilities to make manifest that which has been finished in Christ. I think we need to understand this. We established the last time that realities have been finished in Christ. He dwells in a realm called now. His realm is not just light. His realm is now. There is no tomorrow. There is no yesterday. He does not dwell in time. His realm is now. So all realities are present and true in his realm. But from this dimension of the kingdom, there must be a system of spiritual transportation. Having believed that those realities are true, having believed that there are no limits to this God that we serve, we must now sustain the spiritual intelligence to transport the realities that we desire from this realm and this dimension to be made manifest in our realm. And the name given to that entire process is what the Bible calls faith. Bible faith. I want to talk on faith. The provision allocated to the saints to help them transport this grace the riches of God's grace to make them manifest. It is by grace, but it is through faith. So faith becomes the channel for grace to flow. Anything grace cannot provide, faith cannot manifest. Understand this. 
faith does not just manifest arbitrarily no faith hinges on the fact that that provision is already a reality in the realm of the spirit that that provision is already finished in christ and the assignment of faith is to be the bridge between the realm where it is finished and the realm where it is required to be made manifest so that spiritual realities can be transported from the realm of the spirit healings deliverances miracles breakthroughs all of the dimensions that help the saints to walk in victory that have been purchased through the finished work of christ they will not manifest just by merely agreeing and having the consciousness that it is true they are there the bible is very clear for instance uh, in the fact that Anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. The Bible is very clear as to God's desire to see the saints walking in victory, uh, health-wise, in victory, in finances, victory in their lives, and all sorts of things. But we do not see that as the reality of many in the kingdom. Even those who love Jesus, those who have surrendered their hearts to him, those who have received of his life. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 Paul began to lament mentoring the church in Ephesus and he said, being alienated, he said uh, that having the understanding darkened. He's explaining why believers cannot have not come into the fullness of the potentials of that which the life of God provides. The finished work of Christ has given us access to the full scope of God's grace. The Bible calls it all grace. But that just knowing it does not guarantee that it will be made manifest in my life and your life. And he's saying the bridge here is that our understanding is darkened and that we're being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in us. Our hearts being blinded. So this is very powerful, the grace of God. I did say the last time we met again that the highest revelation of the grace of God is the finished work of Christ, what we call the finished work of Christ. The concept of being finished is realities that have been fully purchased from God's standpoint. Please understand God's idea of finished. He speaks from his realm. So when the Bible says everything is finished, when Jesus said it is finished, what he meant was that access, the potential to access all the multifaceted dimensions of the grace of God have been fully purchased. And through him, the Christ, Jesus, access has been given to man. But I made a statement that I would want to just make again. That the grace of God provides access to the provisions of God or provisions in God. Please listen. The grace of God provides access to the provisions in God but does not automatically make them manifest in my life and your life. Please understand this. So whether or not my life captures the full essence of the power, the glory, the beauty of God's grace, if my life does not capture certain dimensions, it does not mean those dimensions are not in God. The grace of God is able to provide those dimensions, but that through my not understanding the ways of God, I have limited those dimensions from finding expression in my life. So the life and the testimony of the average believer is not necessarily a reflection of the limitation of God or the limitation of his grace. The grace of God is as unlimited as God is but that we have not learned that it is by grace, but then it is through faith. So if all you have is by grace, you are still limited. You will need to understand the channel that transports that grace from the realm of the spirit to be made manifest in your life. Praise the Lord. So let's discuss the subject of faith. Very, very powerful. I like to talk about faith because it is a very powerful topic. Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19. Help us, Holy Spirit. Numbers 23 and verse 19. You are worthy, worthy of my praise. You're the King of kings, Lord of lords. Let your kingdom reign in my heart. Adonai, 
you're the Lamb of God. Truly you are worthy, worthy of my praise. Let your kingdom come. It's our prayer, O oh God. Let your kingdom come. Numbers 23 and verse 19. God is not a man. Very powerful scripture. God became a man, but he is not a man. God is not a man. If you say God is a man, that means he was created. God became a man. That means he made himself a man. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Saying and doing. Take note. Saying and doing. This is God now. Not just saying alone. So when God says, he does not stop at speaking. He does. He says it and he does it. And hath he spoken? And shall he not make it good? Very, very powerful. Next scripture. John chapter 11 and verse 40. John 11 and verse 40. Jesus said to her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. That if you believe, you will see the glory of God. So there is a relationship between the manifestation of the grace and the glory of God in your life and your believing. Let's discuss faith. What is faith? Number one, let me say what faith is not. For most people, when we say what is faith, they will say faith is believing God. Um, I don't totally agree. Faith is not just believing God. Believing is part of the process of faith. But faith is not limited to believing. Faith is not limited to believing. Believing is part of the process that is ultimately called faith. But faith is not just believing. What then is faith? Faith, this is my definition. Even though Hebrews 11 tells us very clearly that now faith is, verse 1, the substance of things hoped for. He calls it the evidence of things not seen. He says, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Verse 3 says, through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were made of things which do appear. This is my definition of faith. And if you're writing, you'd want to write this down. Faith is the name given to the action we take based on our conviction of who God is and the integrity of his word. Faith is the name given to the action that we take based on our conviction of who God is and the integrity of his person. This is what the Bible calls faith. The action you take based on two things, your conviction of who God is and the integrity of his person. Action, action. The action, actions of obedience based on conviction. Act, actions of obedience, not actions of desire, not actions of will, not actions of wish. You can take actions out of sympathy. That's not faith. You can take actions out of um, a desire to move. That's not faith. Your action must be based on obedience. That means your action must be the, the corresponding participatory requirement that is made, that is needed to actualize whatever promise it is that you want to see manifest. 
this is very powerful let me take it again that faith is not mere belief conviction is powerful but that's not all faith is speaking the word is powerful but that's not all faith is it is a sequence of spiritual equations that equal faith and i want to discuss them very quickly the foundation of true bible faith the foundation of true bible faith is the word of god without the word of god in the equation there is no basis for believing it is not believing anything that produces result it is believing what god said because the nature of faith is that it is the speaker that is responsible for manifesting what he said so if you believe the devil the devil has a responsibility to make sure that what you have believed him for comes to pass if you believe your brother or you believe your sister or you believe your government or you believe whoever they have a responsibility to ensure that what you have believed provided the conditions that are that were stipulated for their manifestations have been kept that the speaker or whoever it is whose word has been believed is responsible uh, for seeing that that result is produced in this case god so the word of god is the foundation of for true bible faith when you believe the word of god then you allow the hand of god the might of god to step in to see to it that that which you have believed comes to pass please take note of this this is very very important the foundation of bible faith is the word of god without the word of god there is no basis for believing this is very powerful very very powerful number two conviction what is conviction conviction is your depth of persuasion your depth of persuasion your depth of certainty these are the equations of faith the word of god the basis for faith then your conviction conviction on what number one the integrity of god please take note numbers chapter 23 tells us god is not a man is a manifesto of his integrity in fact the bible is full of um a manifesto of the integrity of god things he said from genesis to revelation and things he did he said it he did it he said it he did it let's go to i think uh, genesis 21 genesis 21 verse 1 genesis 21 and the lord visited sarah as he has said and the lord did unto sarah as he had spoken this is integrity now why did the bible have to give us this information because the Bible already tells us, okay, at least we would have known eventually that, that he came. But God took out time to stress the fact that, hey, God said this and now he has done it. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. Not visited Sarah as it just happened. He said it and the Lord did. Notice every time his Bible faith, there is a saying and there is a doing god is not a man that he should lie if he says it he does it so when believers say it alone there is trouble because god says and he does there is his speaking out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speak it so we can use that scripture to say when god is convic convinced and convicted about something he takes action so believers we are convinced and convicted then we take action but if we stop just at the realm of conviction it becomes mere belief and it is not belief that produces result it is belief plus actions of obedience are we blessed so god visited sarah as he had said and the lord did unto sarah as he had spoken very very powerful so we have here conviction 
But I must tell you that when you are convicted, conviction is a measure of the depth of your persuasion. There are two dimensions of God he calls believers to be convicted in. Number one, his integrity. His integrity. God wants you to believe he is a God of integrity. Remember, we are discussing the system that helps us to access the grace of God and make it manifest too. We call it faith. So when I come to God, my first assignment is to vet him and to probe him. God allows men to probe him. He dares us to probe him. That's why the Bible is not a hidden book. It's open from Genesis to Revelation. And he allows us to probe him through different dispensations and to conclude whether or not he is a God that is worth our trust. Integrity. And then number two, his ability. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. If your conviction is not based on God's integrity and his ability, you're not walking by faith. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must, number one, believe that he exists. Then number two, believe that he has that ability to be a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So you must believe that he is. Then you must believe that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That he has the power to make this happen. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Ephesians 3 and verse 20. Follow carefully, believers. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Now watch this. Now unto him that is able, able, able. We are seeing ability here. Able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. This is the power of God now in motion. The power of God in motion. Ephesians chapter 1, please. Give us from verse 18. Ephesians 1 and verse 18. Paul is praying over the church in Ephesus. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? The Bible does not just say God has power. The exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Look at that description. The exceeding greatness, indescribable greatness of his power. So we are dealing here with a God who has integrity. Number two, we are dealing with a God here who has ability. There are many people who have integrity. They really do. They, they are people who will keep their words if they have the power to. But the unbecoming of them is that they don't have the power, the financial wherewithal, the political wherewithal, the intellectual wherewithal to fulfill that which is in keeping with their integrity. So it takes more than just having been a person of integrity. You must also have the power to maintain your integrity and God has both the ability I mean the integrity and the ability so if I am persuaded when I become persuaded I become persuaded that God has the integrity and he has the ability that means whatever I find in scripture remember yesterday we said that the scripture represents the boundaries of God's commitment to the believer that God is not committed to the believer outside of the provisions that are revealed in scripture so the word of God represents the boundary of God's commitment to us so I search the word of God like going through a garden and I find there exceeding great and precious promises the bible says exceeding great and precious promises this is what the bible says so i find there different dimensions of possibilities that the grace of god can provide and then my first assignment is to vet the integrity of this God. When I come to the conclusion that God is able, and then number two, he has the ability, I am now confident. Watch this. When you are convicted 
the, the height of your conviction is the point where you now, listen carefully, you now understand what God is going to do as well as the role you have to play. Listen to me, please. Meditation and revelation brings us to a point where we must understand the role that we have. Every provision of scripture has conditions for the believers to satisfy. These conditions are not addition to the finished work of Christ. They are not additions. They are participatory roles. They are the roles that demonstrate that we believe God. Remember that every time you believe, there is a call to action. This is very important. Are we together now? So the Christianity that merely stops at confessing or just believing I'm convicted, I know God can do this, will end up disappointing the saints. There is always a participatory role. This is the responsibility dimension of the faith life. And this is a dimension of the faith life that many believers do not want to subscribe to. And I thank God for opportunities like this, this conference under the leadership of our, our dear father and pastor, Dr. Joda, to be able to bring these truths to believers. That it does not just stop at believing or even professing. We must go to the extent uh, of understanding the conditions allocated. There are always conditions. Always conditions. These conditions do not add to what Christ has done. These conditions are called actions of obedience. They are participatory actions that partner with the Holy Spirit in actualizing that which has been finished in Christ. For instance, for a believer to be saved, the Bible gives us the condition. Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 this is what the bible says the bible says give it to us please romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 it says but what saith it the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart the word that is the word of faith which we preach verse 9 it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus and believe with thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Hold on. Do you know believing that Jesus is a prophet does not save you? Do you know believing that Jesus is God does not save you? That's not the allocation for salvation. There is a specific detail about Jesus that the sinner must believe to be saved. Not every information about Jesus brings salvation from sin. He is many things. Believing that Jesus is Rapha does not bring salvation from sin. Believing that Jesus is God does not bring salvation from sin. Believing Jesus is a good God does not bring salvation from sin. It is believing the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus as a revelation of the Father's love through his death, his burial and resurrection. That is the condition allocated. That is the body of information that is responsible for salvation. So you can have a believer for many years or you can have a Christian or anybody born in a Christian family for a long time. He does not argue about the reality of Jesus. But he has not come to the point where these truths are his construction. That person according to scripture is not saved. As far as receiving the life of God is concerned. Very powerful. Verse 10. Same scripture. 10 verse 10 now. Romans. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Right? So, back to our equation. I am convinced that God is true. I am convinced that he has the power. My next assignment now listen carefully. My next assignment now is to find out the promise that God has vowed to make happen in my life. What is the spiritual condition allocated 
until you find the role you have to play, the participatory role, not a role that adds to what Christ has done. It is finished. But the role that you have to play in partnership with the Holy Spirit to transport that reality from the realm where it is finished to the realm where it is needed, where it, is, it will be made manifest, you must know what that role is. For instance, the Bible lets us know that a lazy man who will not sow during the rainy season will beg in the time of harvest. And remember, the speaker of this truth is a person of integrity. Even though he used men to speak, the Bible says they spoke as they were inspired of the Spirit. So these are the words of God. That means there is nobody who becomes determined to be lazy who will succeed God's way. You see that? Because he's negating the condition allocated, diligence, among many other spiritual provisions is part of the equation that makes for a life that is blessed, a life of beauty and color. Very, very powerful. When people had delays or when people had losses in their lives, according to scripture, it took the ministry of the prophetic to bring them out of it. So every time people face unfavorable situations, whether it was the axe head, whether it was the debtors coming to carry the children of the, the wife of the late prophet, anything that had to do with restoration was allocated to the ministry of the prophetic. So if you search in scripture and the Bible says, I will restore to you. So I found out from scripture that the grace of God is able to bring restoration, but that the dynamic of that process is I must understand the principles allocated. So I now know through prayer and God leads me to a man of God, a servant of God that has the unction allocated for my restoration. And then I engage that principle with understanding. And then God is now committed. Please understand this. God's commitment starts when your obedience is done. God's commitment is not, is, it doesn't just come at random. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. God's commitment comes when your obedience is complete. Having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your, your own obedience is complete. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth, the Bible says. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. So anybody who wants to increase God's way, there, is, there are the spiritual laws that govern wealth and abundance, for instance, and one of it is the law of giving. So you cannot withhold and want to increase God's way. You can increase any other way and with it will come a plethora of sorrows. But if you want to increase God's way, is a non-negotiable condition that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. And there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. This is very important. Now, believers, listen. Our assignment is to find out the truths that the word of God has made available to us in Christ and then find out the, the various conditions. Please, please, in the name of Jesus, understand what I'm teaching you. Find out the conditions allocated, allocated for the manifestation of these truths. Then you can now obtain grace. Remember, grace as empowerment now. When you find those conditions, your next assignment is not to move in the flesh. Because some of those conditions are very difficult. In the flesh, you may not be able to walk in keeping with them. So you need to obtain an energizing from God that now empowers you to do. Not every dimension of God's grace does for you. There are certain dimensions of God's grace that empowers you. You do the doing. You, you will do the obeying. But it will not be by the strength of the flesh. Very, very important. So what dimensions, for instance... Of spiritual realities do you desire to see in your life for instance 
I desire greater anointing. I desire greater power. I want to be able to host a very magnificent dimension of God's anointing for territories and nations. Wonderful. Is that possible in Christ? Yes. Does the grace of God allow for that provision? Absolutely. Where do I find it in scripture? Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. So I know that God can anoint with the Holy Ghost and with power. And a man on the strength of that anointing can go about doing good, healing all who are oppressed. And I desire that grace. It is true in Christ. The Father wants to release it without measure to me. But there are conditions. Brothers and sisters, please hear me. There are conditions. The anointing will not just come upon you just because you are a Christian. There is the measure of anointing that comes by reason of being grafted into Christ. But that is not the kind of anointing that will shake territories. Anointing is in levels. The Bible says to grow in grace. So I now find out the conditions and then I begin to pray and search through scripture. And remember, Jesus is our pattern man. So I go to the life of Jesus and I now begin to search how was he empowered because he came as a man. And the Bible lets us know that had he been baptized of John, the Bible says the Holy Spirit drove him to the wilderness. And he was there praying and fasting 40 days. No food, no water. It doesn't necessarily mean to religiously fast for 40 days. The Holy Ghost, remember, is the one who directs you. But it then tells you that the ministry of prayer and fasting is part of the equation for power. It is non-negotiable. It's not an Old Testament concept. It's not a New Testament concept. Anybody who desires to walk in spiritual power cannot ignore the ministry of prayer and fasting. While they prayed and fasted, the Holy Ghost spoke to them. So I desire to hear God clearer. I desire to hear the voice of God with clarity and power. While they prayed and fasted, the Holy Ghost spoke to them. So there is a dimension of prayer and fasting that can take away the haziness in hearing God. Many believers desire certain many kinds of results as far as the manifestation of the grace of God is concerned. But I think the missing link for all of us, most of us, is not necessarily the awareness of the existence of those provisions. Whether it is breakthrough, prosperity, increase, speed, restoration, they are all in Christ. The Bible has shown us that these things are in Christ. It calls them all spiritual blessings. They are in heavenly places and reside with the Christ. But then to understand the participatory conditions, the conditions allocated for the manifestation of these spiritual realities as a way of making the grace of God manifest. This is where a lot of believers do not um, understand. A pastor may be watching, for instance, and you are saying, Apostle, um, I, I desire my church to grow. I desire my ministry to expand. I desire to step into unusual dimensions of grace. And while that is happening, um, you may not understand that while all of that is happening, God desires for you to grow. He desires increase for you. But he's unable to bring that increase. Why? Because um, you have not been able to understand the condition that makes for that increase. One of it, for instance, is if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. So if Christ is not being lifted up, then all men cannot be drawn to him. This is very, very important. Christ has to be lifted up. For all men to be drawn. If self is lifted up. If religious agenda is lifted up. If church is lifted up. Then Christ cannot be revealed. Hallelujah. This is very very important. So your conviction. And then the actions of obedience. And then you back it up with patience. I don't have the time. We would have gone to examine the life of the patriarch Abraham. Because the Bible lets us know. That we should look unto Abraham, Isaiah 51 from verse 1 and 2. It says, look unto Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, that body I called him and I blessed him. That means understudy Abraham as my idea of faith. Understudy him. Understudy him. So we, you have to take a journey 
um, through Abraham's life. You have to go to Genesis 15 and find out what God told him. And then you go to Romans from verse 16 to 22. I apologize, we may not be able to go in because of our time. But Romans chapter 4 from verse 16. The Bible begins to tell us Abraham's contemplation. That he counted God worthy even though he saw that Sarah's womb was already dead. He did not, um, um, what do we call it now? He did not see it as a thing to bend away his faith he believed god defied what his optical eyes were seeing this is very powerful he did not consider the deadness of sarah's womb praise the name of the lord so this is very important believers we live in times where there is a need for the manifestation of the possibilities of the kingdom in our life. We have a bedeviled world, a world that is attempting to push God out of everywhere. Our sociological sphere, our economic sphere, God, God seems like he's a nuisance to civilization. So it looks like you choose God and remain a failure and a non-entity in life, or you exclude God out of your life and face science or face sociology, then you can have a meaningful life life that's not true god is the creator of the heavens and the earth and his ways the bible says are more superior to the ways of men and i believe that in these days god is going to find men and women who will be able to translate the riches the vast riches of his grace and make it manifest through faith it is by grace through faith my lifting in the spirit by grace through faith my excelling in life by grace through faith my prosperity in ministry by grace through faith my longevity even in this bedeviled world by grace longevity has been provided by grace but faith makes it manifest so every dimension apostle i desire restoration the grace of god is able to make it available the finished work of Christ captures that possibility, but it will take the engaging the faith of the Son of God to make it manifest. Remember, when spiritual realities are not made manifest, we cannot behold them and Christ will not be glorified that way and our joy will not be fulfilled and it will threaten our awareness of the love of the Father. We are going to pray by faith through faith hebrews chapter 11 is an archive of men and women who did exploits in the kingdom mighty things terrible things in righteousness and the bible lets us know that faith was the channel for them to convert and manifest these dimensions of grace very very powerful these dimensions of grace, they came through faith. 1 Peter 5 and verse 10. We are preparing to pray now. 1 Peter 5 and verse 10. 1 Peter 5 and verse 10. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish strengthen and settle you it is the god of all grace that does this the god of all grace 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 the god of all lifting the god of all restoration the god of all establishment the god of all grace that every dimension we desire is possible through the grace of god but it is accessible through his grace, but it is made manifest through faith. Grace makes it available. Grace makes it accessible. The consciousness makes it accessible. That knowledge, but then it will take faith to make it manifest in our lives. We are going to pray. We will be praying for the sick. I'll be speaking breakthroughs over your life. I'm not creating anything new. The word of God has already revealed to us that all I'm going to be praying for is possible in God through Christ. 
and it is available to the saints. The finished work of Christ has made it possible for us to walk in these realities. But it will take faith. Faith, in this case, the action of speaking prophetically based on the fact that I know that the Holy Ghost will back my words and empower those words and cause those words to go through the medium of the airwaves to regions and nations and begin to create supernatural realities in the lives of people. Lift your voice wherever you are in one minute and just begin to talk to the Lord. Whether you're in church, whether in your home, your office, wherever, just lift your voice, begin to talk to the Lord Father, I believe, I believe, I believe. It is by grace and it is true faith. Now I understand. It is not just by grace alone. Accessible by grace, made manifest through faith. Accessible by grace. You can mention anything at all. My lifting, accessible by grace, but made manifest through faith. My restoration, accessible and available by grace but made manifest through faith. Spiritual empowerment, oh yes. Available and accessible by grace, but made manifest through faith. What is grace? The consciousness of all that is in Christ. All that is in God routed through the Christ. What is faith? The action I take based on my conviction and in keeping to the principles allocated for the manifestation of that result. That is faith. Faith is not just speaking. Faith is more than confession. Faith is more than just declaration. Faith is more than just believing that God is not a liar. I must find out the conditions allocated from scripture tied to whatever promise I desire to see manifest and then obtain the energizing through God's grace. The second definition of grace, the empowerment that comes on account of that consciousness, that God supplies that supernatural power so that I can now walk in obedience but not by my strength. There are people, for instance, who want to know the Lord more. God wants to reveal himself. But it is going to, stay, it's going to take the labor dimension of faith to study scripture and to expose yourself to the atmosphere of God's presence until the spirit of God begins to reveal Jesus. And that takes time. It takes time to sit in one place and study the Bible for two, three, four, five, six hours. It takes time to dedicate a whole day seated in one place. You do not have the human power to do that. But then his grace comes upon you as an energizing so that you are going to do the studying that reveals Jesus to you. But it's not just going to be by your power. How will you know it's not by your power? You will do unusual things that not everybody can do. Giving, it takes that energizing. Nobody will just commit significant seeds into the, the, the work of the kingdom just like that. No, it takes an energizing of the spirit. So we are going to pray. Father, I believe. That is the first prayer. Father, I believe. I believe. I believe in you. I believe in Jesus, the Christ of God. You are a God of integrity and you are El Shaddai the all-powerful multi-breasted one lift your voice and pray everything that represents unbelief that has has made me doubt your integrity has made me doubt your ability i come against it in the name of jesus i declare that from this conference i believe i believe i believe in the name of jesus i believe based on the integrity of god's word no matter what my situation is saying no matter what the circumstances are saying in the name of jesus the christ of god i decree and i declare that i believe in jesus i believe in Jesus. God is a God of integrity and God is a God of all ability. You can turn my life around. You can meet my needs. You can see to it that the glory and the beauty of heaven is revealed in and through my life. Go ahead and pray. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Prayer point number two. Lord, bring me to a place of persuasion 
The Bible says, but I know whom I have believed. Powerful scripture. It says, and I am persuaded, but I know whom I have believed. I've not just believed. I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed to him against that day. But I know whom I have believed. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, bring me to a place of conviction. I'm tired of thinking I believe this and then tomorrow I find out that I don't even believe it again. Bring persuasion. Bring conviction. Bring persuasion. I know whom I believe and I am persuaded. Go ahead and pray. Bring conviction to my life. Bring conviction to my Christian experience. Conviction to my Christian experience. In the name of Jesus, I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus, the Son of the living God. I believe and I am convicted. I am convicted. I'm not hoping to believe. I'm not hoping God will do it. I know he will do it based on his integrity and based on his ability. Prayer point number three, and I want you to pray this from the depth of your heart. Father, reveal to me by scripture and through the ministry of the Spirit, Reveal to me the principles allocated for the results I desire. Go ahead and pray. The principles allocated for the results I desire. Good master, what must I do to be saved? Good master, what must I do to be saved? I know salvation is there, but what are the participatory steps in principle? Lift your voice and pray. If it's your finances, Lord, reveal to me what is the principle allocated for seeing the supplies of heaven if it's your spiritual life i'd like you to pray what is the principle allocated from scripture to make me have a robust and a vibrant spiritual life if it's breakthrough if it's lifting if you want to see a greater dimension of the anointing of the spirit in your life father what is this principle i know you are able to anoint men history shows us how you have anointed men and they shook territories with power and grace reveal to me the principles from scripture remember the bible says everyone that asketh receiveth he said he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be open ye have not because ye ask not so go ahead and ask in faith believing lord i decree and declare show me the principle show me the principle in the name of jesus i want a strong and a vibrant home i want to raise godly children that reality is a provision that the grace of god has afforded me in christ but reveal to me the participatory principles that i will need to engage the principles i will need to engage to see to it that this becomes a reality thank you jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, for those watching, for those following, I like you by faith. Two things. We have just a few minutes and we're done. This will be my final session. In one minute, I'd like you to mention every area you're trusting God for a miracle. This is a conference. And we cannot end this conference without the manifestation of the power and the grace and the glory of God. I'd like you to open up your mouth and pray. I'd like you to declare by the Spirit, declare by the Spirit, declare by the supernatural power of God that you are trusting God for a miracle. In whatever area, lift your voice and mention it as you trust God to visit you. I want to pray with you. I want to release my faith with you. Go ahead. Don't let the devil lie to you and make you believe that God is unable to do this. No, 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 no. Believe God. Believe God with all your heart. Believe God with all your heart. Believe God with all your strength. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we bless you. 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 You are the do one. You are able. You are able. You are able to do exceeding abundantly above, far above all we ask or think. We believe you. We believe you. Because I want to pray for you now. I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Now listen very carefully. There are anointings 
and there are graces that God has given in the body. And these graces are for the lifting, the deliverance, the emancipation of many. I believe by the Spirit of God that the Lord led your father and your pastor to just allow me come and minister to the body of believers because there is a dimension of that grace that God wants to release upon your life. And I want you to believe it. The prophetic is very powerful. And if and when ministered within the boundary of its relevance, it can produce wonders in the life of believers. I do not want to end this session without speaking over your life. Do not get used to pain. Do not get used to tragedy. There is always a way out. Remember, it is by grace and true faith. As far as receiving this prayer is concerned, you've done your own part. You have come to church or you've connected online. Your own part is done. Now it is my own part in the name of Jesus to pray for you. And I want you to believe God and believe to expect miraculous testimonies. Father, I stretch my hands over your people, the members of this great assembly, global, and then I pray for all those who are connecting and watching online in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God. You have anointed me to bring liberty, to bring deliverance, to open up closed doors. I declare, O oh God, that you honor every prophetic word that comes out from my lips. I speak over your life in the name of Jesus and I decree and declare that everything that stands as an embargo, stands as a limitation, stands as a resistance. In the name of Jesus and by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I declare it is cleared out of the way. I prophesy favor upon your life. I speak favor. Let it mantle you and let the results show. Let favor mantle you according to Exodus chapter 3. Let it mantle you according to Esther in the name of Jesus Christ, chapter 2 and verse 15, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that you will obtain favor in the eyes of everyone who sees you. And according to Exodus 3.21, you will not go empty. I, I, I end the days of emptiness in your hands, spiritually, financially, and so on, in the name of Jesus. I pray for your spiritual life. I release angelic encounters. I declare for many of you who have lost touch with spiritual things, your your hunger, your drive for the things of the spirit have gone down in the name of Jesus. I fan your life to flames. I fan your passion for the word. I fan your passion for prayer. I find your passion for fasting. I find your passion for fellowship. In the name of Jesus, I plant in you the spiritual discipline to continue to press until you become a mighty man, a mighty woman in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that the Lord will continue to increase you. He will bless you. He will bless all those who are connected to your household in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone who is sick in the body, I pray for you right now. No matter what the condition is, I release the healing power that the grace of God affords. I declare that the healing power and the life of Jesus will surge through your body and quicken you right now. I bring to end terminal diseases. I cause everything that wants to destroy you. I prophesy longevity. I speak health. I speak vitality to your body. In the name of Jesus, as a result of this conference, I join my faith with every man and every woman who has ministered. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I release you into the next dimension of your life, spiritually, economically, in the name of Jesus. That even at times when men are saying there is a casting down, I prophesy to you that for you it will be that there is a lifting up. The hand of God is strong upon your life. In the name of Jesus, I declare that that all who walk against the counsel of God in your life, they go down in the name of Jesus. Every arsenal of darkness against your life, in the name of Jesus, let it be broken. Every orchestration that is tied to foundations, tied to bloodlines, tied to, to, to activities of ancestry, I come against it in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us, he nailed this to his cross. In the name of Jesus and 
by the ministry of the blood, we declare that you are free forever from every yoke of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. And I lend my voice with the voice of our Father, your pastor, to declare that this church and this assembly and all who are connected to the grace of Dr. Jordan, I speak to you, rise from one dimension to the other. May the grace of God speak for you. Ministry will work for you. Souls will continue to be saved through your lives. Lives and destinies will continue to be transformed. God will raise helpers. God will raise all who love God and love you and love what you are involved with. In the name of Jesus, I speak ease to your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I fan your prayer life to flames in the name of Jesus. No more spiritual lukewarmness, no excuses in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord increase you in the name of Jesus. And finally, I want to truly appreciate Dr. Joda. Thank you so much, sir, and your wife, the entire leadership of this great assembly. I thank you so much for the privilege to have been a blessing. And I pray in the name of Jesus that testimonies will come from this conference and that the name of the Lord will forever be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Shalom. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.